Okay, everyone, welcome. Today is darn near the last day of May, 5.30. My name is Steve Vetteral. If you can hear me, you can see the risk disclosure of Voria Prime screen. Please give me a quick yes in the chat window. I'm going to be opening up the Q&A window as well. Uh, feel free to type your questions in. Um, <clears throat> please message your upline and downline. Today we have a very special guest. Uh, as I had mentioned on my Telegram channels. Um, and for those of you that have not subscribed to the channel yet, I highly suggest hopping into Telegram, download it, what have you. Um, the channel is called <clears throat> Trade Tracker with yours truly, Steve Federal. Um, welcome everybody from around the world. We are going to probably take about 45 minutes today. I, I want, uh, Tyler has a, a number of slides in his presentation to go through. Um, so please allocate some time. I would highly suggest that you guys pay attention to this and or watch the recordings that will be uploaded into the back office once they're produced, I would assume, at some point tomorrow. This is going to be very important stuff. Um, and Tyler is an absolute expert on this stuff. So I thought it'd be smart for him to come in and uh, make the presentation to the team. Do keep in mind whenever we present different kinds of settings to you guys, um, these are not recommendations, okay? They're not recommendations from Avoria Prime. They're not recommendations from Tyler and his team. They're not recommendations from anybody. I'm really the only one that can get into any kind of recommendations. Um, and I really, really like um, – some of the stuff you guys will see coming down the pike as far as the deep data dive, we're starting to really funnel down uh, and so forth. But let's just go ahead and do a quick risk disclosure. And I'm going to run into a Forex calendar discussion really quickly. Um, for those trading the NZD ring, certainly perk up on this call because uh, we've got some big items related to red folder news events that are attached to that ring. So the risk disclosure first, trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors. You're welcome to read the rest of what you see on the screen. In addition to that, um, what we, we haven't seen any uh, aspects of this, but please don't take the MyFX book links that you guys see from us or that I may post in them and repost them somewhere else. Okay, you can, you can have them come in my Telegram channel, look at the FX book links, but please do not share them. And keep in mind, if you're, it's the first time you're hearing all these disclosures and disclaimers from you. Just understand this. There are a lot of governmental bodies around the world that have very, very highly aggressive employees that would love nothing more than make a career out of tearing apart a company like ours from a regulator standpoint. Please do not give them that opportunity. Okay? So if you are sharing any of your results using Alexander, Iris, or Einstein, please do not use the term company recommended settings. So AP does not have any recommended settings. They're not a financial advisory firm. They just license software the users can use however they want at their own risk and discretion. So some software, as certainly Einstein, Alexander, and some of the other stuff uh, with Iris, you know, they have their own default out-of-the-box settings. You have the ability to customize those settings however you want. So AP has nothing to do with a customer's brokerage account. We don't solicit or take investments. We don't run a fund for uh, customers or subscribers. Uh, we don't recommend any brokers. We just license software and offer amazing education from Daisy Duncan and the team, including yours truly. So settings are not company recommended. So with all that baloney out of the way, <laughs> I'll go in to share a different screen. <clears throat> Let's take a quick peek at Forex Factory. All right, so for those of you new to this, uh, forexfactory.com, this is posted in the notes portion, the section that's uploaded in the back office. Um, want to, actually, you know what, before I get into that, just pause for one second. Um, I think I get a lot of questions about who's who and what. Um, this is the avoriaprime.com website. So you can see all of the important people. And most importantly, these are our education and coaches. They're all fantastic at what they do. And I highly suggest um, you take a look at them, starting with, depending on your language, um, starting with the Days A. Duncan's uh, Forex Basics course. It'll help answer a lot of questions related to this. 
Um, and then you can see, obviously, my ugly mug there. So <clears throat> the Forex Games Contest, I also want to just touch on this real quick. Um, so we have the uh, two weeks, um, and as you can see here, uh, A. Adams at the top of the list as far as Iris. Good job. Alexander, specials at the top of the list here. Um, and then we have an MAGA 1312 that has been clobbering at Einstein. And I have that highlighted because whoever knows this person or if you're on the call, ping me on Telegram, please. I want to see what you're doing. Thank you. All right. So let's get back into Forex calendar. Um, note that I sort this out. I take out the orange and the yellow folders because I don't want to see all the gobbledygook. I take out the currencies that I don't trade. If you do current trade these currencies, make sure you check these boxes back in. Um, <clears throat> so as far as the calendar note, um, on Monday, um, let's go to the right date. That would be helpful, huh? <clears throat> on Monday, always make sure, by the way, I make this mistake up here, you guys. Make sure you're checking the current coming up week. <clears throat> That's a tendency to do it. So, um Bank holiday, I guess, today. Um, I don't know why there'd be a bank holiday on Sunday. <laughs> uh, but the French bank holiday is, uh, I guess, today as well, tomorrow. All right, so we have ISM manufacturing. This is a big um, release. So it's essentially one of the red folder news events. This is typically out at, at um, uh, 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. But as you can see, my screen is set to... Uh, Pacific time here in SoCal. Um, so this is a this is a pretty important market condition. Um, I don't know that I'd have anything turned off through this because we're expecting these numbers to be terrible, right? So um, the the important thing is is I would prefer at least this week um, if you're in a positive performance inside either Alexander Einstein or whichever one you are trading. Um, I would probably want to have this off before Wednesday morning, just because this ADP and the ISM manufacturing, um, these have a um, pretty big impact on the movement of the dollar. I'm not going to get into a lot of details on this because I don't really have a lot of time to explain this. I want to get to Tyler's presentation. Um, but just know that I probably would have that turned off um, before that. If you're in drawdown, again, I get lots of questions about this. What do I do if I'm in drawdown? Um, we're going to present some options for that. But the key thing is, is and, and I, I sound like a broken record, but I'm, I'll keep saying it is, at this particular point, and I nor anybody on the team, and I've met some fantastic people that are really good uh, at what they do with data sorting and R&D, um, I'm not smart enough to step in front of the software at this point. So <clears throat> I'd rather it pull itself out. If you noticed over the last couple of weeks, we had a lot of folks that were in drawdown. Um, and the, and do also keep in mind, and I'm not going to recommend brokers, but this seems like this conversation should dovetail into that. I'm not going to do that. Um, but with most of the individuals that we saw that had live accounts that had much different, much worse results um, than the average of the rest of the Aborian subscribers out there, was more than likely because the broker you deal with is terrible. So you need to take a look at um, what the contract says. You know, wh what are they doing as far as, and you know, actually, I, Tyler's an expert on this. So I probably, if he has some time, and maybe have him just touch on this um, so that everybody's a little more aware out there, because I tell you, I'm coming across just pervasive amounts of rotten Forex brokers. So I think it's time we all kind of you know, stay within compliance. I'm not looking to recommend, but at least teach you guys what to look at um, from the aspect of your broker. So let's do that. Um, you know, obviously left later in the week, we got ADP and uh, ISM on Wednesday, Thursday, ECB press conference. Uh, so Thursday and Friday, you know, obviously the unemployment rate, this is one of the biggest news releases in the entire planet because uh, it is US based. It always comes out. Um, at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time, the first Friday of the month from the BLM. These numbers should be completely rotten. This is most of this is priced into the market. Um, so I, I certainly would not be trading in front of Friday. You know, unless you're cool with your software running through all news events, as some do, which is fine. 
you are more plugged in and educated, um, you know, go with that. But I prefer this week. I'm going to make sure even if, um, you know, these, these may not impact the currency markets that much. I prefer if I'm just rolling into, you know, Tuesday morning with some decent profit, um, you know, just turn it off. All right. Mentions that I want to make. All right, so let's do this. Um, I'm going to introduce uh, Tyler. <clears throat> As you guys may know, uh, Tyler, he has a here's his, look at that great face. Here's his role. So essentially, Tyler's the new head of the EA task force. So he's really an advisor of fintech with Avoria Prime now, sort of in the R and D department. Um, and I can tell you from my just recent relationships with Tyler's, this kid has just torn these systems back and forth um, apart uh, and really done an excellent job with uh, his beta teams out there, as many of you guys already know. So let me go ahead and bring Tyler on. Uh, Tyler, I made you a... Can you hear me loud and clear? Yeah, we can hear you. Awesome. So you should have capabilities. Let me stop sharing my screen. I... I just need you to uh, approve me to be able to share screens myself. Okay, so let me go into the panelists. Let's approve you. Make you co-host. How's that, right? Perfect. All right. So um, the last few weeks, you know, uh, myself and, and Patrick have been um, going back and forth uh, a little bit with Steve. Steve's been exploring a lot of different settings and different things people have been sending in and um, we wanted to look into different data and answer a few questions that people have had. And again, we're not able to recommend or, you know, give you any form of settings. Um, this is all just stuff that we're going to provide you and share you data and you can take that data and use it to your advantage. Um, you know, everything's all education based here. So, uh, the first thing we want to show you is an introduction to high volatility settings and, uh, what we discovered was one simple tweak you could make in your settings that would actually allow you to have a very similar profitability up front. Um, but if something went against you, um, it would make all the difference in your drawdown as well. We've received a bunch of different questions on um, large accounts, not seeing the same results as say a smaller account. Um, so we're going to go over why that is today and also tell you how to be able to match uh, the profitability of small accounts on larger balances. Um, and we're going to show you all of this data. So first to get into it, uh, what are high volatility settings and how do they work? Uh, the first thing is if Steven warns of a certain currency pair being volatile or unstable looking for the week, you could apply these settings in your settings. Um, the first thing is you would be able to flip the range multiplier and position size multiplier. So I'm going to show you what this does. The past eight weeks, we've shared what were normal market settings. And we wanted to come up with something that, like, for example, this week, you just saw there's a lot of red folder news. We wanted to come up with something that, you know, people could use um, during high volatility situations to have more peace of mind and actually come with the data to show you how it would uh, make a difference. So in this scenario, all we're actually doing is flipping the setting that was previously used in normal market conditions for the range multiplier and the position multiplier and switching them around. So instead of the range multiplier being at 1.15, it would go to 1.35. Instead of the position size at 1.35, the position size would go to 1.15. Now I want to show you the data and comparisons to actually understand this so you can see how it would actually have played a role on different accounts. Now, before we get to this data, you might be thinking, how could this affect my upfront probability or profitability? And how will this change my experience? And what we discovered is the experience upfront for the first 150 or so pips that each currency pair goes against you, you're going to have a near identical experience. But when a pair does trend against you further, your ability to have less exposure and handle a larger movement with lower risk is evident. So we're going to start by looking at a $1,000 balance comparison. When you look at this, you can see that normal market conditions um, are based on one in 500 leverage. And the black line was the last eight weeks, what we've you know, sent out normal market conditions from Steve. And this would allow you to have a pair go 330 pips against you from your initial entry. 
Now with high volatility settings, that one pair now gets you all the way to 500 pips before a margin call on a one in 500 leverage. Um, and you know, this is another example of using a calculator to show that. Now, please note that this uh, calculator does not account for the default 250 pip stop losses um, that are built into the software. Uh, inside your software settings, you can change your variable setting for the amount of pips you're willing to set on each entry as a stop loss, or you can turn them off entirely if you so choose. Um, for me, I'm never a fan of completely turning off any form of um, risk management. I would probably just change the variable setting if I wanted to be able to withstand a larger move. But as you see, this is a look at 1K normal market condition settings. And you see that around 300 you know, pips, 300 or so pips, it's, it's going uh, into margin call. Now, another look at high volatility settings. Now, all of a sudden, you're making it plus 500 pips. Um, by just flipping these two settings. So on volatile weeks, you can actually withstand larger movements and still continue to run. Now, what I do want to show about that is again, look, here's those initial movements until about 150 or so pips here. Um, things are pretty much the same, right? Which means that during those lower ranging markets where the software is making a lot of money, you're going to be, you know, doing the same, um, getting, near identical results, right? Linear based results to the other settings. But if it trends against you, your ability to stay in the game longer and handle a, a much larger move or, or volatile drop or whatever it may be um, could exist there. Now, again, we can't recommend any settings, but we're just providing you data on how this would have, would have played out in these uh, simulations here. Um, now here's a 3K balance comparison and you can look at the black line um, this is running all three pairs. It, you could have handled all three pairs at the same time going 330 pips against your entry. Um, now, if you look at the high volatility settings, you can handle all three pairs now going 520 pips against you at the same time. Um, so your ability to withstand a lot more um, is completely evident there. And again, as you see in the beginning, the results are, are very linear on those lower levels. It's not till the higher levels where the difference is really made. So again, here's another look at this data. Um, again, this does not account for the default 250 pip stop losses in this simulation. This would be as if there were no stop losses in play or you changed your variable setting to higher than the number shown here. Um, but again, these were the normal condition settings that we have been sending out, um, you know, on Steve's end from the last eight weeks. And he's been, you know, crushing it. We've had phenomenal results, but a lot of customers have asked us, you know, these questions on how can I uh, make it more conservative? How could I handle more volatility? How can I achieve those results on bigger accounts? Right. And we're going to get into that. Um, and you see here again, you know, a 3K on high volatility settings, that same principle we just talked about. It can handle over 550 pips or so before a margin call um, by using just flipping that range multiplier and position size multiplier. Now, let's get into a little bit of larger balance talk. Um, we have received a lot of questions on why smaller accounts with the same settings have been producing larger profits than some of the people running. Um, larger accounts. So we dug into the data and what we found out makes complete sense and we want to share it with you. So first, so we don't confuse anyone, we need to start off with why the software with normal market condition setting is always going to be more conservative by nature on larger balances. And it starts with your entry lot size. Any account that's using a 0.01 starting lot size this lot size has to increment to increase to the next position, possible position size. Meaning even if you're setting for the lot multiplier is 1.35, you cannot open a 0 0.0135 lot size. A 0 0.01 is the smallest, meaning by default, it has to jump to 0 0.02, 0 0.03 in its cost averaging attempts. Whereas a large account, say you are running a 30K account at a 0.10 starting lot size with a lot size multiplier 1.35, 0.10 times 1.35 would have allowed a 0.14 trade to be taken. But again, on a small account, that doesn't work. A 0 0.0135 cannot be opened, meaning that smaller accounts lot increment is always going to be entering larger positions per balance, even with the same settings, right? If you were basing it on the 0 0.01 per 3K principle. So 
why is this important to know? Again, some people have requested asking, how can we match the small account results we've been seeing? And the first is thing that you need to understand is that is your own risk. Um, but we will present the data and what we have determined to match similar risk slash potential profitability, which is any accounts over 10K, if you wanted to match the results of a one, two or 3K account, the data supports that a 0 0.01 lot size per 1500 balance in equity matches similarly in risk. So now you may be asking, what if I want to stay at a 0 0.01 for 3K, even on a large account? That's perfectly fine. You have full autonomy of your money. Um, these are not recommendations we are giving, but rather just data we are providing for those who inquire. Now, let me show you how an increased lot size and a high volatility setting can pair on larger accounts. So here's a $25,000 balance comparison um, of Again, regular settings or regular market settings versus high volatility settings. When you look at normal market settings, your margin call on a 25K account running a 0 0.01 per 3K would be all three pairs moving 490 pips at the same time. Whereas if you look at the orange line, which is high volatility, that same movement would only actually have you in 45% drawdown if all three pairs went against you 500 pips, which is absolutely incredible. Um, so how does that look? Again, here's a look at a 25K regular condition setting at 0 0.01 per 3K. Um, it could handle about, like I said, 490 or so pips before a margin call where, and again, these are all on one in 500 leverage, these examples. Whereas you look at a 25K regular condition setting at 0 0.01 per 1500, and this, as you see, does match the smaller accounts. If we, you went back to that 3K account and some of those other ones we were looking at, they were margin calling around, um, you know, if all three pairs went 330 pips against you. So if you were theoretically on a larger account running a 0.01 per 1500, that would match the risk and some of the profitability that you've been seeing on smaller accounts due to that lot, lot increment that's why it makes sense as we just showed you in the data. Now let's look at a 25K account on high volatility settings at 01 per 3K. And this is impressive to me. This is where I got really excited. I looked at, okay, you wanna stay at uh, a 0 0.01 per 3K and look at the movements you can withstand on all three pairs. You're telling me that all three currency pairs running high volatility settings in this example if I had no stop losses applied or increased stop losses, whatever it may be, um, I could handle almost a thousand pip move. And when you look at data like that, um, and I'm saying a thousand pip move on all three pairs, right? That's, that's incredible. Um, so you can see how these high volatility settings can completely allow somebody um, during uncertainty or, um, red folder news to possibly have some more peace of mind. But again, um, these aren't recommendations. This is just data that we're sharing to allow you to make your own uh, determinations and how you want to manage your risk in, in your capital in your Forex account. And then here's a look at 25K high volatility condition settings at 01 per 1500. Um, again, you can see that this matches a little bit. It actually goes a lot longer um, then what a smaller account would have been. You'd look at that 3K or the 10K and it was still around um, at this setting, it was still around about 330 pips for margin call. Here with a larger balance still, even at 01 per 1500, it becomes more conservative. Um, and you're using high volatility settings here. So uh, 426 plus pips you could handle, you know, probably margin call around 490 as well um, with those. Um, on all three pairs if they did that at the same time. So you can see how these settings can play a difference um, and this small tweak could play a difference in your trading experience weekly. And again, this is just data to support um, anything we ever share with you. We're always going to come to you with data and make sure it makes sense. Now, um, we've had a lot of people that also have said that they want to follow live accounts. They also want to follow a live large account uh, that's been managed with weekly Steven Vetterall settings. Um, so say no more. We have a 25K account that has been following Steven Vetterall's exact update step by step. And Steven will continue to manage this account and use it for trade tracking. And you'll also have a few more accounts to track. Um, 
on this Monday, we're actually going to be sharing my FX book links to many accounts from Steven. So uh, you'll be able to see what accounts you'll have access to, to watch. Um, you're going to have five different uh, my FX book accounts to track um, from Steve. You're going to have his 3K demo that has been running and FX Blue Link has already been shared and many of you are tracking it. Um, you're going to see a 3K live account starting this week. Um, three pairs, Steven strategy. You're going to also see this 25K live account that's been running for the last seven weeks with Steven strategy, as well as a 3K live Jesse Cameron strategy and a 10K live Jesse Cameron strategy. Um, so we believe in sharing transparent results. Um, so you're going to have access to all of these accounts as of Monday, plus a link to Steven's public MyFX book profile will be posted. Um, again, these MyFX books are not to be shared in public places, nor in advertising groups on Facebook, nor in presentations that are not one-on-ones. Now, here's a sneak peek. Um, in the next slides, we're going to talk about this account and how it's been managed since it started. Um, but you can see this is a $25,000 live account. You guys are going to have access to start tracking and following Steve's updates on um, weekly. Now, this account started live eight weeks ago. And for the first three weeks, it was a 4,500 euro account running a 0 0.01 starting lot size. The fourth week, there was a deposit of another 20K made into the account at that time. The account was still running a 0 0.01 per 5K. We realized that the lot size at 0 0.01 per 5K was way too conservative. Now, what do you mean by too conservative? It's possible this EA needs some volatility to perform well. It's a ranging market EA. So if you're using a pair that's really slow in movement, it'll cost average a lot and be slow to recover profits. So actually sometimes being too conservative is more dangerous. It's like driving a 25, uh, car 25 miles per hour on the freeway where everyone else is doing 80 miles per hour and it sounds safe, but then you get hit from behind because you weren't going fast enough. So um, we realized that it was running too conservatively. So on week five, the lot size was increased to the default of 0.03K that has been shared so far for Steven for normal market conditions, um, which has been a 0 0.08 starting lot size on this account. This account has now been running for seven weeks live. And as of this week, Steve will be increasing the lot size on this larger account to match 0.01 per 1500 for tracking going forward. Now for management, when activating high volatility settings to be able to handle larger moves, this account will also lower its lot size back to 0 0.01 per 3K with high volatility settings to be on the conservative end. Um, this account also always uses trailing equity if possible, force activated Tuesday to match positive week's performance with a buffer to weekly equity break even if needed. Um, and with that being said, I'll go back to the account just so you guys can look at it again. This is uh, an account that started you know, at 0 0.01 per 5K, then was increased to 0 0.01 per 3K. And now we're going to match the, the risk and the profitability of a smaller account, um, as well as, you know, use the introduction of high volatility settings to be able to withstand larger moves and, and bigger volatility in these uncertain markets. Um, but with that being said, uh, that's my presentation for the day. I'll throw it back to you, Steve, and I guess we could get into maybe the Q&A or anything else you'd like to talk about. Yeah, if you could, please. Um, one question on that, um, and maybe it would be a matter of showing the settings, um, you know, side by side with this FX, whatever you could just tell us. But, you know, what will the max lot size for 25K be? Um. So the good thing is I believe that we're actually updating um, the software that everyone should have tomorrow to version 105 of Einstein and Alexander, where you actually will not need to calculate the max lot size anymore. Okay. Um, but I can go show you um, because we had it right here. Um, so in this example, running high volatility condition settings, the max would be a, um, and this is at, 0.01 per 1500, the max would be a 0.43. Um, running normal condition settings, um, the max would be a 0.21. Uh, or no, these are high volatility settings at 0. Point, yeah, and then you can see, uh, here we go, 0. 0.66 as regular condition setting at 0, 01 per 3K. So yeah, and all depending on which one you're running here, these are the four examples I've given um, based on what starting lot size and regular condition settings or high volatility. Um, but 
no matter what, people aren't going to have to calculate the max lot size anymore. It's, um, it's going to be built in uh, to version 105 and higher where it automatically calculates it for you. So that setting should disappear um, just so everybody does know. Yeah, so one of the questions is, can you explain the levels? Can you explain the levels? Well, in simple, the levels are a cost averaging attempt. So in short, this is if a trade goes against you, it's going to cost average and mathematically open position sizes to get you out of the trend when there's a retracement. So let's say you end up on, say, a level four trade. Technically, level zero and one can exit at a loss, but two, three, and four are going to make enough profit to make up for that loss plus a profit. And that's how the strategy is designed when it does get into volatile situations. So by flipping these two during uh, high volatility, it allows you to, you know, withstand larger moves as well as space out your range uh, between levels a little more and uh, just overall handle much larger moves in the market. Well, not opening as large of lot sizes, uh, which is also very good because, you know, the larger the lot sizes you're opening, the closer you're going to get to a margin call where if uh, you're decreasing your position size multiplier, you're also, um, while still opening more trades and, and distancing them, you're also decreasing the amount of lots you have open in the market. Okay, makes sense. Um, that addresses a couple of questions that we're seeing come across, uh, such as, you know, when will um, I mention to potentially put these settings in place? So a lot of the questions that have come across to that, it's gonna depend on the week, you guys. Um, the, the volatility has been much higher um, this year, certainly during the very beginning breakouts of the pandemic. If you guys haven't looked at it, just a simple chart of most of the currencies, I would encourage that. Um, you could see links to how they're doing um, in my notes. But the um, it's, it's just going to depend on the week. So as we're rolling into Sunday, I'll take a look at what's going on. Maybe Tyler and, and his teams, guys are exceptionally adept at looking at this as well and we'll maybe sort of come to some kind of consensus of, you know, what maybe you should look at. Um, the, the problem is, is I'm trying not to get into a habit, everybody, of just coming out and saying, hey, here's what you need to do. Don't do this. Don't do that. I mean, this is really about education of, of just the options that are available to you. Okay. So yeah, and we understand there's a lot of people out there that don't know how to read the market. And quite frankly, there's some weeks I don't know how to read the market, guys. It's just bananas, right? So you have to kind of understand that we're in a volatile setting. Um, and the broken record that I am, you know, please make sure you've set up a demo account. Um, I know that this is probably not going to be well received by the community, but I'm going to say it anyway. If you are funding a live account, with between $500 and $1,000, it is going to be difficult uh, for you guys to be able to get, you know, some of these great numbers, these larger accounts. It's just tough. You know, you can't have three pairs with a $500 account. I mean, you're, you're, you're climbing an uphill battle right there. And I highly suggest put more money together before you go live, right? You can run demos with whatever size you want. I know a lot of people have a tendency to run a demo with, something around the size that you're going to start a live account with. Uh, but I think you're, you're, you're sort of, you're, you're, you're putting yourself up against a wall. Start a demo account with three grand. I think this is going to build the mindset that you're going to need in order to try and fund an account, ideally with between two to $3,000. Now, with that being said, there are other fantastic products that are in the pipeline um, in beta testing with Avoria Prime that potentially may address smaller accounts. So I could certainly change this language depending upon um, some of the other products. And from what we've seen that we've had some great beta testing results, but we're at just that, we're at beta. So we're not ready to go live with any of this stuff yet, but it looks quite promising. So um, Tyler, if you could please, since I've gotten a lot, and I loved your explanation of this to me uh, both this morning and the other day, um, somebody that, you know, what should they take a look at um, in terms of their broker? You know, what, what red flags? You had mentioned a situation where um, a particular Avoria subscriber had some pretty significant drawdown 
uh, with their Forex broker. And I guess once you took a deeper dive on what is that, just some, some terrible stuff in the contract. Yeah, so when it comes to brokers, you, you want to make sure that you're using an A-book direct liquidity STP feed form of broker. And, and not all brokers are the same. Some will tell you they're A-book. The, the biggest thing is that you can actually go and look and you can determine if there's anything being used against you on the, the feed you are trading on. So your trading feed is simply just the feed your broker is giving you and how you can check to see if they're using any form of virtual dealer, pip freezes, any contract specs against you. Um, if you go into your VPS and you right click on one of the actual currencies um, in the market watch window, you can actually click and see the, the specifications. And if you see uh, where it says con or, uh, contract stops and uh, different levels there, um, if it's higher than zero, you're going to want to pretty much, you know, probably look into a different broker. And again, we can't recommend or refer any brokers. You should always talk to your sponsors and um, see what's working for other customers and people. But we, we can't refer any. The biggest thing is I can just tell you what to look for. Um, so you want to make sure they're not using any um, stop levels against your contract stops. Um, so just go ahead and you can right click and check out the specifications on any currency on any feed of any broker you're using and see if that stops level is higher than zero. If it is, or any of those contracts are higher than, you know, zero there for the stops. Um, you're you're going to probably want to look into another broker um, just because they, there is something being used against you. Or if you have a relationship with your broker, then maybe you reach out to them and ask them, Hey, what's being used against me on this feed? Um, and, and you can ask and, you know, they may tell you the truth. They may not. Um, that'll also determine whether you should maybe run for the hills. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one question was, can you show the screen with the regular settings one more time? Um, so regular conditions at 0 0.01 per 3K on a 25K or a smaller account? What size account do we want to look at? Yeah, I mean, Evan just asked a question related to just showing the setting screen. I'm not sure what the size that was on. Okay. You know, here's, here's regular condition settings um, on a larger account at 0 0.01 per 3K. Um, as well, there's the version of regular condition settings at 0 0.01 per 1500, which would more match that, uh, that risk we, we talked about um, of a smaller account. So it matches um, similarly the risk as well as the profitability. Okay. But. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So let me just uh, just pan through these questions right here. One of them was asking, can you jump back to um, one of the first ones where it shows the black line? I think it was slide three, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we have a few uh, depending on which balance. But here's uh, the yeah, one. Here it is. Three K. Okay. okay. Yeah, the three K balance comparison. So the important thing here, guys, is that. Um, you know, you have two different situations, just like Tyler explained in the beginning. And, you know, I, I, I think the question, there's a lot of people are asking the same theme I'm coming out as well, you know, which week, what do we switch? And, you know, I, for now, um, the settings that are default settings out of the box that I show every week um, are the current settings on the current three ring pair that we're running. But the reason we set up all of these live accounts is that we're going to show you how different settings are performing. Just remember, some of these demo accounts will be more aggressive than others. Some will be super conservative, okay? Um, like our twenty k, like our twenty five k account. And you know, we're going to try and keep these settings the same, so we have some consistency in the performance of these accounts. Um, but in in the interest of disclosure, uh, the twenty five k account had some smaller balance and it had different settings um, in the beginning, so the performance you know, could have been better or worse than what you guys see on the screen. Um, let me read this question too. Two weeks market is up and Einstein still open sell position on a higher level, but buy position on starting lot size. Um, that's, yep. That's in its functionality. So it's, yeah. so you're, you're just, what it's doing is it's hedging and you know, those lower lot sizes, they keep hitting the take profit. So it'll continue to open new hedges well, also, it's in the bigger trend it sees and picture waiting for it to play out. It'll continue to play that as well. So it, it, it can play both sides of the market. But yes, um, you know, depending on what your settings are, 
um, you know, obviously that's an example and of high volatility settings and how they could make a difference as well. Um, you know, depending on if you're doing riskier things or some, I know there's uh, people that try to run two pairs on a 1k account. I mean, I would never do that myself. Um, but for those who are attempting it, you know, I mean, just take a look at the data. You got to look at data. Everything's about data and understanding your risk. Um, because we're in this to build wealth. We're not in this to, you know, hit a home run and then lose it all next week. So, so what do you think about this, Tyler? The, the second part of that question from Dario was he should calculate to open on higher level buy position to cover loss of sell position. This is big problem need to be resolved. Not sure what that question's. I, um, you know, I, I think so. um, this is just a, an example of someone that, you know, m may uh, either like some different strategies we'll be coming out with in the future. Some people aren't a big fan of the cost averaging strategies. Um, other people love it. I personally, I understand the products and, you know, how they work very well. So I'm a big fan, but um, a lot of people don't necessarily always like cost averaging strategies. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, some people like that might be fans of some of our other products and the testing to come, but, um, I wouldn't say it's a problem, um, by any means, you know, just if you're, you're in a trend, you know, you have to look at what you're doing differently than other people. Um, or, you know, as we, we saw, cause for example, you know, I look at some of my own accounts and, uh, I held a drawdown. I remember, um, not this last week, but the week prior, I, I held a drawdown, uh, going into the weekend and, uh, I made it myself out this week, um, with a positive you know, uh, a net position and, you know, I, and then I see other people that are still in drawdown and it makes me question, you know, what are the settings that they're running? Are they following, you know, your, your, um, your exact play by play, Steve, um, as well, you know, what are the brokers, right? You know, those are, those are the main things I'd always look at when people are seeing indifferent results, um, than the next person. Um, you know, the other thing you could really look at is also when did that, account turn on? Have you used trailing equity, right? How are you managing an account? A lot of people need to look at their management. Um, if you're just running this 24 five and you're not taking, you know, net positions, um, profitable weekly when they do exist, um, that also is going to set yourself up to get into trends that you might get stuck in for a week or two. So, um, the best thing to try and not get stuck in a trend is, you know, to, to mitigate risk, um, after Wednesday as, you know, the developers of this product have uh, told us since the beginning that, um, you know, this, this product has its most success and the strategy has its most success um, Sunday to about Wednesday morning. And if you're, you know, continuing to uh, run after that, you, you should be prepared to possibly get stuck in a trend or um, end up in trades that you may not be able to close before the weekend. Um, and, you know, when, when you're doing that, you always put yourself also in a higher probability of being stuck in a trend for a little. So um, the people I see making the most profit tend to, you know, get in and out of the, the market um, from, you know, my experience. Um, they're not, they're not holding um, trades normally through the weekends. Yeah. Okay. That, that's, that's a really good point. Um, by the way, Vincent, if you can hear me, send me an email. I want to see screenshots of what you're talking about. Uh, if you could, please. So svetteral at avoriaprime.com. Um, can we get some guidance on how to connect our accounts to FX Book or FX Blue? There are videos out on YouTube, guys. If you just go to YouTube search function, type that in. You'll see there's actually a bunch of good videos out on that. Um, when changing the multipliers, when there is a big move, won't this make it more difficult to get out of the market when it swings back? Tyler? So... Yes. Um, I, I don't have the slide shown, but I actually, uh, this exact um, representation and simulation, there's another option to show the pullbacks. And we did compare them. And what was so cool about it is, like I said, during the normal movements, um, you know, before there's a lot of crazy volatility or a, a trend goes against you, um, the results are near linear and, and very identical. Um, but again, when it goes against you, Yes, you, the, the pullback that would be needed to get out of this trend would be greater than, say, the pullback that's needed to get out of here. But again, 
um, you also aren't risking as much and you can stay in the trend a lot longer to get out um, without risking a margin call or as much capital. So again, it's all personal preference. But yes, theoretically running a higher um, lot multiplier is always going to be putting more volume back into the market, which means that mathematically you need less um, pips of a pullback or retracement um, to actually get out of that trend in that sequence. So that would be correct. Right. So DK, just sort of dovetailing on that, Tyler, DK asks, if you left the volatility settings on permanently, wouldn't that keep you safer or as safe versus switching them back and forth? Yes, but just understand that there's also less chance for performance on that. Anything you want to add there, Tyler? Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's spot on. I mean, you're, if you look, so if we look at the difference in lots being open, here's normal condition settings, your max lots of 0.12, okay? Now you look here at high volatility on the same balance, and it's uh, 0.08. So you have less lots open in the market, which means that, yes, um, theoretically, uh, as it, something goes against you, it'd be different. But as you see, for the first few levels, as we discussed, the increment's the same. It's not till later where that pullback would have to become um, a bit more apparent, if that makes sense. Because you can see, you know, where we're looking identical between normal and high volatility in these two for the first few levels. But it's not until later on um, where that pullback would need to be, um, you know, a little more evident to, to make a difference in a play. But again, um, you can also, if using high volatility settings, um, increasing your max levels, that's up to you. Um, it obviously just allows you to enter, uh, again, a next cost average trade, which uh, would give you, again, a better chance of getting out of a, uh, with a, a smaller pullback or retracement. Um, but that's all personal preference. Um, you know, I, I like levels eight because it, it gives you distance and that's really all you need. So here's a good one from Grace. Um, I have a prospect asking if USGFX would be good for our software. You know, I, I've never used them or heard of them. Um, again, okay. when it comes to brokers, you know, I don't, I, I can't make any uh, recommendations. I have, I have a broker I personally use. I like everyone has a broker they personally like. Um, yep. I've had a great experience with mine. That's all I can say. Um, you know, so, so hopefully you guys, you guys understand why we take this stance, right? Cause a lot of people are like, Oh, why can't you just recommend this to me? Well, think about it guys. What if we make a recommendation of a broker and it turns out to be a schlock outfit and maybe we vetted them out and, but maybe it's just things don't go right. Right. Um, you know, and I'm not saying this to scare everybody out there. There's a lot of good Forex brokers on this planet. There's more crappy ones than good. Um, but just make sure you read the fine print. You know, there's nothing wrong with, um, you know, even a lot of the crappy Forex brokers are not going to take off with your money. So if this is your guy's concern, you know, let your heart not be troubled on that one. Um, but it is most important that you study what is their policy on execution um, in your accounts. That's, that's what's key. So just bust that's out the fine print. And I know people hate that, but just do it. You know, you got, you got to bust out the fine print because, you know, I'll tell you, um, I'll just give you an example. I can't tell you the broker's name, but I'll tell you, I saw an example of, um, a, a broker that is actually pretty popular in the space. And, you know, I thought was very reputable and I saw a big post, uh, all over social media, some traders the other day of, uh, one of their students made a, a ton of money on a us 30 trade. And they came back uh, into the account after he withdrew it and said he owed them the money um, a few hours later because it was an error from their liquidity provider. And for me, as, as a broker, if you let somebody withdraw that, you can't, it, again, that's, that's on you. You shouldn't come back and say, okay, our liquidity provider, we're taking this um, you know, back from you. That's on you as a broker. Uh, you know, and, and that just to me would show uh, an experience, just an example of, experiences people have with brokers um, as well. You know, you talk to other customers who have been using the brokers for some time. Don't just sign up for some random broker. Go find a broker that, you know, there's um, raving customers that are having great experiences using similar technologies and products. Do your due diligence and, you know, just, just look to find a, a reputable solution for yourself um, always. But again, we can't recommend any uh, legally. You gotta, you gotta do that for yourself. Talk to your sponsors. Um, but you know, again, they're, none of them are all the same. And, uh, you know, we, that's a very important thing to touch on as we get into more softwares in the future too. 
Um, you know, I'll, I'll tell you uh, an example. Uh, two and a half years ago, I was using a broker with a, a different software. Um, you know, when I was first getting into the expert advisor world and playing with softwares, and I had this broker block a hedge trade that the software tried to take 20,000 times in my sleep. So, you know, they, they didn't want to let the, the hedge go through and save the account. They blocked it 20,000 times. Um, you know, I had to manually intervene on that account. So you just, you, you want to make sure that you're, you're playing uh, in a place that you can trust. And that's it. You know, again, I can't recommend any, you gotta, you gotta go do your own due diligence and just talk to your sponsors, talk to other people in the community, see what's working for other people and you know what their experiences have been so far. Yeah. And keep in mind the, uh, the, the, um, the courses that we have in there, guys, explain the levels and how the software trades very detailed in a, a deep dive portion of that section. So make sure you're in there taking a look at the, uh, there. There's a lot of good questions coming through guys. Thanks. Um, but a lot of these questions coming through are also telling me you guys didn't go through the Forex basics course. So don't let me out yet. Go watch the course. <laughs> um, can we have the max lot size change be an option for us? Lower accounts might take larger hits if they have a 0.12 instead of 0.1. 0.1 for me has been a perfect consistent lot for eight levels off. Okay. Um, hey, every, everyone has their own, you know, personal okay. experience. Again, this is why uh, you have full range and full control of how you want to manage it. We just simply can provide you data. Um, Steve can provide you settings he's going to be managing his own accounts with as he's licensed to do so. And however you decide to manage your account is again up to you. We, we simply um, are just here to provide data and Steve is here to guide you on how he's managing his own accounts. And um, it's up to you on who you want to follow or how you want to manage. Um, you know, that's the best part about this is we, we give you full control and you control your risk, you control your management, your, your parameters, and you have a full, you know, control of everything. Uh, I did see a question uh, if somebody wanted to know about people have been asking about um, the specs uh, and broker, if I can just show them how to access that. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen real quick. I, I can't show you what broker I'm using or any of that, but I'm just going to show you how to access it real quick. Um, but I, I don't want to pull up my actual VPS and show you guys too much because this is a public call. Um, so let me just go ahead and pull it up real quick and give me a second. And, and Steve, you can keep going through the questions while I do that. Okay. So while you're doing that, Tyler, here's a good one for you. It sort of plays on the other side of that from David. It says, with the higher volatility settings, does not the retracement required to close the trade also become larger? Yep, we, we, we did answer that, David. That's, that is 100% correct. Now, it does not uh, make as much of a difference in the beginning, right? It's only as the trend goes much farther against you. That's what's very cool about the high volatility settings. So let's say... Um, you applied the high volatility of settings and, and expecting a huge move and it doesn't happen. Well, instead of limiting yourself, um, you're still able to collect very similar profits on those lower levels. Um, but if it was to go against you, it would have that exponential effect, right? Of, of you know, being a, a key difference in drawdown. Yeah, absolutely. Good suggestions <clears throat> so i get this question a lot everybody most people try to cover their subscriptions with 1k and then they blow their account can you please put suggestions on that so um i'm always going to sound the same on that you guys if you're putting in 500 to a thousand dollars and i understand there's people out there saying well that's all we can afford save up some more money it's not that tough to do uh, depending on your situation it may take you longer to get with a live account, but you're, you're just statistically giving yourself a much better chance to do better. And that really is the bottom line. So here we go. I'm going to share my screen here. So um, how I got to this is you can go ahead and you could right click on any of these uh, currencies here. I'm, I'm not going to do it because I'm covering the broker I'm using just so I'm not giving any recommendations here. Um, but uh, you can see the stops level right here is zero. This is what you're going to want to look for under the contract specification. So you can just simply right click any of the currency pairs in your market watch window and look at the stops level. If this is anything higher than zero, it means there's something on that feed that is not in your favor. Um, and you know, that's 
I, I, I've seen it at one, which could just be a small pit freeze. I've seen it at 30, which means there could be 30 different virtual dealers and plugins and things that are designed to, you know, stop punt, trade against you, um, everything, right? So you want to look for a, an ideal broker that has a raw feed that they're not using anything against you, um, that, you know, whatever's going in and going out is, is what you're getting. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you don't want to move that window. I get that. We want to keep yep. things private here. Um, but how do you pop that window up again? That uh, you go there. here and just right click on any of these currencies in the market watch window and okay. then you'll click contract specifications. It'll be one of the options that shows up. Contract specs. Yep. Good. Okay. How do we compare FX pairs in terms of volatility? I mean, some pairs are more volatile as others. How do we recognize that? Um, and that's from uh, Mariana. Um, I would highly suggest, Mariana, that you watch last week's presentation with my other guest, Jesse Kamer. Yep. That will answer that question. Um, and if you have not seen that presentation, folks, I would highly go back, watch it. I don't care if you need to watch it four times to understand what it is. And this is the same thing I tell my students outside in, um, in futures land, learning to train the futures markets. You know, a lot of them will say, well, you know, I watched the video, didn't understand. Watch it like four or five times, you know, get, get sick of hearing my voice as I often joke, right? Um, it just allows it to be pushed in, um, to long term, long term portion of the brain. All right. So that question next. That one was is, a, that was a great webinar last week too. And then the reason um, we're telling you when you're asking about different currency pairs to check that out is, um, you know, our special guest last week, Jesse. He's our newest EA Academy coach. He actually, um, from the time we started beta testing this initial algo to its, you know, inception into becoming Einstein and Alexander, um, Jesse had been testing it on a hundred k demo account. Um, testing different level ranges on different pairs based on the volatility he saw, but he correct, collected a ton of data in a nine month period running that account um, that would allow you to see how uh, volatile different pairs were based on the settings he was running. So um, just super cool. Um, you know, we're, we're going to look to try to get some more of that data um, out into uh, bite sized chunks that are easier to understand very soon. Uh, but you know, it's, it, there's, you can just, you can really just look at pairs. And again, you know, when you look at some of these other uh, volatility settings, you can handle larger moves, which the key is if you can handle larger moves and uh, you now have the variable stop loss setting to be able to increase your stops to handle those moves, um, you know, or turn them off entirely. Again, I'm not a big fan of turning anything off. I would just change my variable setting to increase them if I wanted to handle a larger move. Um, but, you know, at the same time, you have, uh, have control to play with some of those more volatile pairs now um, with these new settings, um, you know, for not only volatility, but also for the, the new settings in the software that allow you to change the stop loss. Yeah, so <clears throat> we get this question a lot. It's probably one of the biggest questions we get. Um, unless you are an experienced trader, uh, and by that, I mean somebody that may or may not do manual or discretionary trading. You understand technical analysis as Kyler and I do. Um, there's no way that I would be stepping in front of the software saying that I'm smarter than it. Because the biggest question I get, uh, the biggest common theme question, I guess I should say, over the last four or five weeks, guys, is, you know, what do I do if I'm in drawdown? I, it's almost like people just want me magically to give them some solution that's going to turn the account around. And, and really, in all fairness, over this data set, what we have learned is, yes, in some cases, it's taken some time, uh, but the software almost always has pulled you out of drawdown. Anything you want to comment on that, Tyler? No, I, I think the big thing is that people just need to understand their, their risk. And if you, um, you want more peace of mind, we've provided data on what high volatility condition settings can allow. Um, you know, if you're a more conservative person and, um, also if you're somebody who is one of those people with that larger account that's saying, Hey, I'm not making enough profit. And why are these three K accounts making X percent a week? And I'm making half or something, uh, then, you know, we, we address that as well, but you know, you just got to be comfortable and you have to have your risk management in place, right? That that's what allows you to have peace of mind when using this product is, you know, what your max risk is. So set your max equity risk. Um, and be comfortable with it. 
and you know don't go go increasing it if a black swan event happens or something happens then you know if you're you are just ever worried or maybe you're an extremely conservative person maybe high volatility condition settings you know might be your thing all the time but again remember there might be less uh profit as well because of that um so you know it's just it's all personal preference, but you have to design that and understand that based on your own risk tolerance and make those decisions for yourself. Here's an interesting question, Tyler, from Sean. With Einstein taking four types of trades on three pairs automatically, isn't that like trading six pairs? And we should take this into account when checking risk management in the drawdown calculator. Um, yeah, well, that's if you are taking all of those are if and, and I would ask you if you're seeing those what time frame are you running on because you know by the the settings we're showing we we always hear on at least uh, Steve's side, um, you know, if you're running Jesse's settings, then that would be a totally different thing than what I'm, you know, kind of talking about right here today. Um, but the lower time frames are going to be more likely to open dual sequences. Um, now on the daily time frame, I can tell you that I have seen in the past seven weeks on my live account, I have seen two dual sequences entirely, um, out of probably a hundred sequences. Um, so just to put that in perspective, if you're seeing a lot of those two, I would also, you know, ask what broker you're using. Um, so, you know, or if you're just on the one minute time frame or a lower time frame, because it will happen on lower time frames. But uh, on the daily, you should not see that many of them. But yes, if you're running a lower time frame and you are, you know, expecting dual sequences, yes. Also, uh, please note in version 105, we're adding um, a setting. Uh, I believe it should actually be live uh, tomorrow for you all, where you're going to be able to actually restrict the dual sequences. So this is actually important since we're covering this uh, right now, um, you're gonna be able to restrict it. So I'll give you an example. You're gonna be able to say not to uh, allow dual sequences till after level say nine. And if your max levels is at eight, you just completely restricted any dual sequence from ever being able to enter. So that is a new setting also being added as well for those of you who maybe are trying to run the lower time frames but do not want dual sequences either. Um, so that setting as well as coming to Einstein and Alexander um, I believe this week. So uh, look, look forward to that as well for those who are looking to uh, restrict the ability for dual sequences to be entered. Yeah. And th that is a big deal. And please don't ask us a lot of questions on that guys or send me emails on that. Just trust that Tyler and his team at R and D uh, are going to do a really deep dive. I know that um, that has <clears throat> posed some issues and, you know, we're here guys for overall to do one thing and that's to lower your risk or at least make you take a hard look um, at your overall financial situation. And can you afford to even trade that, right? Do you have experience? Have you run a demo? Uh, but a lot of the questions that I'm seeing are basic stuff that will be covered in the Forex basics course. Daisy Duncan's done a fantastic job. Um, and I do not say that lightly because as Tyler and everybody will certainly know, I am exceedingly tough uh, on people that are in this industry because most of them stink. Um, and I would not be with this organization and the fantastic directors, Tyler and the bunch and all the great developers out there if I did not think this was the number one plan in this planet, which I do. So it's going to take us some time. We're a startup. We've been around for a few months, if that. Um, and it's going to take some time to work this out, bring some other products down the channels that will offer uh, a lot more in that. For those that ask questions, please keep a note of the question that you ask me. Um, you're welcome to send me an email. Just make sure that the email that you send me, the question comes with, um, yes, I've looked into my broker and I do understand my contractual relationship. Um, I need to see a screenshot of the settings. Um, and a detailed explanation of what the issue is, okay? But please do not send me emails because, you know, guys, I, I don't have all week. I've already been putting 10 hours a week into Avoria Prime the last few weeks. Um, but I do not have a ton of time to answer long, drawn-out emails. So I need quick-hit stuff if you're going to ask me a question. Or you're certainly welcome next week, um, as always, or Tuesday, and do that. So if you want to see Jesse's presentation, because I'm seeing that come across some questions from a few people, um, it is my, just go to the resources uh, tab in the back office of Warrior Prime and then go to forecast trade week. Uh, make sure you spread the word to subscribe to 
all of the important channels to you, but primarily um, trade tracking with Jesse and trade tracker with Steve Federal. Any uh, last comments you want to make, Tyler? We're past an hour. I know people got stuff to do, including yours truly. I have a date with a golf cart and three friends in about 25 minutes, so I need to hop. Um, <laughs> I love it. Um, uh, no, last, last notes, just – um, dig into the data. This recording will be posted. You have uh, last week's with Jesse. He presented a lot of data on other currency pairs. Now we're showing you um, ways to have a higher volatility setting, which would allow you to potentially play with more volatile pairs or pairs that move a little more, or even just be more conservative with the current pairs that um, we've been recommending, or well, I'm not recommending, but Steve has shared and uh, recommended um, as default for this product so far. And, um, you know, we're going to continue to dig into more data, um, continue to add more features to every product that already exists and future to come products. Uh, every week we are ever analyzing results, what's going on with our products. And we're going to make sure to continue to add the enhancements needed for our customers to have the best experience and have the most uh, easy use at all times. Yeah. With that, Soaks, we will bid you a fantastic week for anybody out there that's been suffering from the C19. You guys, uh, our hearts go out to you and I hope it works out well for you. But um, I choose not to give this disease any time of day, if you've noticed. So I wish everybody well. Um, have a fantastic week. May the trades be with you. <laughs>